Joining me now from his home in Hong Kong is Matt Abergel. Welcome to the CJM Daily. Thank you for having me. Uh, you've been in Hong Kong for, it'll be a decade or a little over a decade that you opened your first restaurant there, yeah. right? 12 and, years. Uh, 12 years you moved, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, so this year is an anniversary year. Uh, what are some of the things that uh, your brand is doing over the course of this year to mark the, the anniversary of, you know, opening uh, the first restaurant? So normally we have just one really big party. Like uh, we'll usually bring in a DJ oftentimes from Canada or from Japan um, and just have a big party. But obviously this year was a very different year for everybody and for restaurants and gatherings. So we decided to do 10 collaborations over the course of more, it's probably gonna be more like 11 months. Um, and yeah, I mean, each one is just kind of a, a connection to a friend or to someone who's special to us or to a brand that supported us or people that we've gotten to know over the last 10 years or before. Um, and, and just to try and kind of extend the celebration and just to show appreciation to kind of the extended community of people that we've, you know, we've been in touch with. A big part of our restaurant has always been people traveling to Hong Kong and hanging out in Hong Kong. And obviously this last year has been not much of that. So it's, it's just a, it's a bit, you know, it's, it's nice for us to just be able to reach out and, and celebrate with people outside of Hong Kong as well as in Hong Kong. So are you going to be doing uh, clothing brands or um, a special menu yeah. tasting items? What are some of the things that you have um, um, on the, on the agenda? Yeah, so so far we've done uh, we've done some stuff with a clothing brand with a shoe brand called Roan, who's a friend of ours from Vancouver. Uh, we've done um, uh, another clothing brand in LA. Some close friends of ours called the Hundreds. We did that at a just at you know at a bar. The Roan one, we did a special menu together with our formal general manager who runs an alcohol company. Um, this month is. Uh, August is going to be Carhartt. So it's another clothing brand that we've worked with over the years. Done our, they've done our uniforms. Um, there's going to be a couple other ones in the, in the works, a uh, couple special menus, things that just, it's kind of all over the place. We're going to try to do some, you know, just some sports oriented stuff. Some, you know, it's, it's, it's all, it's all over the place. Just trying to diversify the types of celebrations we have. You mentioned COVID. So we should talk about it. What has it been like for you personally living in uh, Hong Kong during the COVID? Let's start with that. And, and how, how is it now? Um, well, for us, nothing's really changed as far, like the, as far as the... We've been wearing a mask since last March. And we still wear a mask. And I don't imagine we won't be wearing a mask for a long time. Um, everybody here wears a mask. If you go outside of your house without a mask, that's weird. And if you see someone without a mask, that's weird. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, I think it's just really become a different acceptance level here. I think there's a lot, it's a lot different, uh, of an approach, you know, we haven't had a single case for 41 days, but nothing's changed, you know? So it's, it's, you know, it's a very strict, um, quarantine rules, very strict, you know, who can come in, who can leave, whatever. Um, but it's just a different approach, you know? Hong Kong doesn't accept the idea that people could be prevented from dying and we wouldn't prevent it. That's kind of the approach they have. You know, I think in the course of the year and a half, it's less than 300 people have died, um, you know, in a city of 8 million people. And that's just because of the extreme caution. You know, there's no, there, there wasn't a, I think they just put like human life and they value the human human element of it over everything else, whether that's social welfare or, or economic welfare or anything like that. So it's quite interesting um, to watch the rest of the world just, you know, talk about needing, needing to reopen and having to reopen and everything falling apart while people are still dying. So, yeah, it's interesting, but I don't know. I don't know. There's no right. There's no wrong, I guess. It's just this is the approach that we're in and we have no real say or or you know i think it's a it's a lot higher acceptance rate here we'll talk about that in a second back to uh 
your restaurants. So for how long were you, were you closed? Were you only takeout? How did that pan out? Um, Hong Kong didn't close entirely. We, we were closed. We, we voluntarily closed for about three weeks um, and just did takeout just because there was so much uncertainty. And in the beginning, there was not, um, it just wasn't really a clear message and, and the rules were changing so quickly. So it'd be like one day you can open at six and the next day you got to close at nine and the next day you can only have two people and the next day you can have six people. And it was just a mess and they were just kind of wrapped. Everyone was just wrapped. We were really early, right? In, in like, as far as uh, getting COVID, you know? So it was um, just a lot of confusion. Uh, and then, so we closed voluntarily for a couple of weeks and just did takeaway just to kind of protect ourselves, protect our staff and figure out, figure out the best way to do it. Cause we had never done takeaway before uh, in 10 years. And we had never done, yeah, we'd all, we were, we were never done lunch. We'd never done takeaway. We'd never, done, so many things we'd never done. So we were trying to figure out things. And so we, we closed for a bit, but then, I mean, you know, we're still under different types of restrictions. Um, most of the restrictions now are based on vaccine. So like if you're, if your staff is fully vaccinated, then you can open to a certain time with a certain amount of people. And, but there's, yeah, there's a lot of variants of, of rules, uh, depending on, on what type of business you run, the kind of people that are working and so on and so forth. But I mean, it was, it's been a challenge, but you know, we're still here and, you know, there's, we're really lucky. I mean, the government was actually super supportive in the beginning with money and, you know, with giving every, all the businesses support monetarily initially, um, less so as, as it went on. Did you have to lay staff off? No, we didn't lay anybody off. We didn't, uh, yeah, we didn't. Living so far away from Canada, I know you probably keep touch with what's going on back home. Alberta was a, a disaster in terms of how it was handled. It still is, even though the stampede is open. Um, are you familiar with, you know, how your family is handling everything? I talk to everyone a lot. And, you know, the, it's Alberta's, Alberta's approach to it is, is economy first and, and everything else kind of second, which is kind of generally Alberta's approach to everything. Um, and you know, there everyone just deals with it differently, and it's and it's a mass like you know like it's it's a it's it's the it's the popular vote basically like you know the way that people see things and like you know the, no no one was rallying against wearing a mask here for example no one ever thought that that was you know you know against their personal freedom when that's protecting other people you know it, that kind of thing is it just it makes no sense in asia in general it makes no sense that never happened that would never happen in asia in general let's talk about that right now uh because we, we only have a few more minutes and i want to yeah. get right into where you are if you're all right with that of course. um so nobody would protest because of where you live at the moment and that has been a big uh, international condemnation, of course, of the the law that was passed a year ago. Um, are you able at all to talk about this uh, without getting into trouble? Because I won't bring it up if you're going to get into trouble talking about the national security. Yeah, uh, I mean, I don't feel oppressed, for example. I'm not a very political person to start with, but I don't feel oppressed. I mean, there's definitely there's definitely people that I mean, there, it's definitely not normal. And it's definitely like been a huge shift in the paradigm of how people see the government um, and their reaction, you know, uh, between because I mean, we going through going through the protests and the social unrest for the year before COVID was if as as detrimental to my business, if not more than COVID. Um, on top of that, it just took the toll on the city that it, it's it was insane just how quickly things shifted uh, and the types of I mean, that being said, like, again, I think two people died in the whole year of protesting and social unrest. And if you look at the rest of anywhere in the world, you know, this is this kind of thing would lead to a, a lot more human life loss. Um, and so, I mean, like I always, I, I try and take, like, I, I can't control that part of my life in, in this city. Uh, but when I look other elsewhere, I guess, when I look outside and I, and I see the types of political unrest and instability and crime and, and things that happen all over the world. To me, this is an acceptable trade-off. You know, my kids are safe. People are not dying in the streets. There's no guns. There's no violence. Um, even like with the police being, 
you know, really not in a good place right now in Hong Kong. Like, you know, they didn't kill anybody. No one, no one died at the hands of the police. Um, the government made plenty of bad decisions, but so did people. So, I mean, there's, there's all kinds of, of different ways to look at it. I just, in, in the world we live in now, I'm thankful and I'm grateful to be here and not somewhere else. You are also, uh, you know, a, a Canadian, white and uh, foreigner. So I wonder how much um, that impacts, you know, your day to day life. If you were, you know, a you, born Hong Kong uh, Chinese or your, your you know, businesses, uh, employees, they're a lot more affected by it, I suppose. Oh, absolutely. I mean, my I, I work, my chefs are 95 percent Cantonese, young uh, male chef, you know, like the the target audience for you know protests and and also for for just this the feeling of oppression i mean uh, you know this feeling of of you know un just yeah i mean it, it's it definitely doesn't affect me the way it affects them you know what i mean it's not it's not no doubt about that um but you know there's not uh like like i said you know i'm i'm, I'm grateful to have the place i i have in this society and and the grass is, you know, I, I go home whenever I go home, I, I you realize that Canada is not the place that it, people think it is in a lot of ways as well. You know, it's not just some utopian version of America. You know, it's it's a uh, it's still cr lots of crime, still lots of drugs, still lots of disorganized government and and uh, and, you know, violence and and inequality and, and all those kind of things. And I think that there's you know, there's lots of ways to look at the world and we can. I'm like I said, I'm just kind of I'm very grateful to be here and, and to have the life I have here. And I'm not going to I'm not going to start protesting. You know, I'm not going to it's it's not my uh, not my life goal to be a political person. I, I take care of the people that I'm surrounded by and, and that that uh, I'm responsible for. And I take care of them well. And outside of that, you know, I try and just stay focused. All right, so let's change topics. Um, you got a Michelin star during the pandemic, which uh, got you lots of international press. What do you do now with the star behind you? What's next? Mm, nothing changes for us. I mean, for us, it's really just just keep on going and and stay focused. And I mean, that as, as great as as the Michelin star is for for recognition and for business and for it doesn't change our business at all. It doesn't change our like model at all. Um, and I think that, you know, we, we had a plan to grow and that plan's changed. Uh, we were going to go to LA and, and open last year. Um, that plan has completely changed. Uh, the whole world has obviously changed a lot. So we're not doing that anymore. Um, it's just about staying focused here and, and being, you know, just, just getting our foundation back to where it, it once was and, and being really strong and just, you know, maintaining, you know, this, this is all that I think that uh, most of the world right now is maintaining, you know, and I think that unless you have huge amounts of money that you can <clears throat> afford to lose, you know, it's a, it's a pretty, it's, it's pretty consistent with, with everybody's, you know, goal is just to keep, keep your head above water. Talking about your, uh, your influence, your Jewish influence and how it's uh, informed um, your cooking, we have to bring up chicken soup and you know cornish hens from from your past so let's talk yeah. about that um how how does that uh manifest in your menus here if at all uh i think that like conceptually there's definitely you know some flavors and we use a lot of schmaltz i mean we have a abundance of chicken fat so we use a ton of schmaltz um which is something that my bubby would use all the time I think that mostly though, it's, it's about generosity. It's about, you know, being open to, you know, having people feeding people and taking care of people. And that's, that's more the influence I think from my Jewish heritage and, and side than anything. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's, that's mostly where it comes from. You know, the, it's, she's always there, you know, you're always kind of thinking about the person you love most, you know, when, when you're cooking, hopefully, um, and you know that's that's where that comes from what's the connection if any that you have with the hong kong jewish community because i know there is one um are you yeah, all I'm like, in that circle like, my kids go to the hong kong jewish school here um 
you know, we've got friends. They got, you know, a lot, a lot of the Jewish community supports the restaurants. Uh, outside of that, I don't have that much time, I guess, to, to spend within it. But we, you know, we, we do small things here and there. Such as? If they have something, if they want us to donate to something, which is always being asked, you know, we'll donate dinners or time or, you know, that kind of stuff. But not, not, we're not terribly connected, uh, you know, full, like we're not fully, fully in it. Um, so is there any uh, message that you have for uh, your family and friends back in Canada that you want to send greetings before we end? Um, I think everyone that I sh usually should talk to, I talk to, but, you know, lots of love and uh, maybe I'll see you in 2023 or whenever we're able to travel again. 